morning and welcome to St. Mark's Lutheran Corpus Christi on this Palm Sunday. By way of announcements, um, we had 100 or 7,560 meals last Sunday packed here at uh, St. Mark's by Galilean Lutheran, and that's for Kids Against Hunger. We will be having a Good Friday service this week. It will be available after 12 on Friday. However, we will not be celebrating a Monday Thursday service. Tickets are available for the annual Prime Rib Carryout Dinner, which will be uh, on April 23rd. Tickets are available from the office. We sell only 100, so if you want one, please do so um, quickly. Welcome now to our service, and we begin our service in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hosanna in the highest. We begin with right on, right on in majesty as our processional hymn.
those who with their tongues confess Jesus as Lord, and with their lives praise Him as Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The reading of the Passion from St. Mark. It was two days before the Passover and the festival on unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, not during the festival, for there may be a riot among the people. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priest in order to betray Jesus to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So Judas began to look for an opportunity to betray Jesus. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, at evening Jesus came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, the one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one after another, Surely not I. Jesus said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread. And after blessing it, broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. Jesus said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went on to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But Peter said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same.
spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. Jesus came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately while Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him there came a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign saying, The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to Jesus at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were abandoned? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me, but let the scripture be fulfilled.
girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But Peter denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out to the forecourt. Then the cock crowed, and the servant girl on seeing him began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priest held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him, You say so. Then the chief priest accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again, Then what do you wish me to do? What do you want me to do with this man? Call the king of the Jews. They shouted back, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Yeah, it's great. 
description of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And with him they cast crucified two bands, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Ah, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others, he could not save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taught him.
is that these words are also part of the Old Testament in many instances. Yes, Mark 15 reveals the violent and humiliation that Jesus suffered at the hands of the Romans, but also of the Jewish leaders of his day. And in the Gospel of Mark, Mark conveys many of those words that we would read in especially the Psalms of the Old Testament. And I would like to share some of those with you this morning just so that you begin to understand where they come from and why or how they are affecting. And Jesus' silence before his accusers is recorded in Psalms 38, 12 through 14. Those who want to kill me set their traps. Those who would harm me talk of my ruin. All day long they scheme and lie. I am like the deaf who cannot hear, like the mute who cannot speak. I have become like one who does not hear, whose mouth can no, offer no supply. Other places we read about the mockery in the Old Testament, especially again in Psalms. Psalms 22. Dogs surround me, a pack of villains encircle me. They pierce my hands and my feet. All my bones are displaced. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among them and cast lots for my garments. We also hear Jesus' cry of abandonment as echoed from Psalm 22, verse 1. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from my cries of anguish? Also, there are many other references that come from Old Testament as you read here in Mark's Gospel. As well as Jesus' own prediction of his passion, but of his resurrection. Taken together, these details give the impression that Good Friday is all part of God's plan. Some would say, but it's not scripted. God didn't just sit down and say, this is the way it's going to be. And yet, you can't read it without thinking, but why? And then I stop and think. There are people that I have, if I would have written down when they come to be married, or uh, at other times, or even my own kids, when they would do something, we look and say, yeah. We predicted that, didn't we? And it's come true. Just because we had predicted it did not indicate that it was going to have to come true. But in knowing the circumstances of those individuals, and especially of our children, we know that. And God knew Jesus. He knew the situation. And in the Psalms of David, we see and hear those things about Jesus and what he will undergo and why. Mark in his Gospel is a skilled writer because he weaves all of those things together. Those various moments, those fulfillments into the narrative to convey Jesus' faithfulness, a divine faithfulness, which is 
part of God's covenant agreement with Israel from the very beginning. It is all a part of God's commitment to the mission that he was to fulfill. And we need to remember that fulfillment because it involves each and every one of us in that as we turn and believe in him, we have the promise of life eternal because of what he has done, because of his offering his life that you and I might be saved. And as a result, there is a restoration of humankind. Jesus refuses here at this point as he enters into Jerusalem to slow down his ministry and his mission. His preaching, his teaching, his calling of his disciples, his temple visits of casting out the merchants, the money changers, even his silence as he is being tormented and accused, his own language all point towards the mission of death and resurrection. It is all a matter of his saving each and every one of us. It doesn't mean that his life is any easier at that point. I cannot fathom what he must have been going through, knowing by his own actions that he would be offered up on the cross. What must he have been feeling? I would have been scared, and I think all of us would have been. But Jesus took that on as his mission in order to save us, in order for us to be his disciples, receiving forgiveness and life everlasting. But knowing that they were going to come and kill him as a result, is just hard to envision. It has to be sheer love that he was offering and sharing at that moment in order that there might be a wholeness in our life and in that which we were to do. How did he do it? Only through the power of God working in him, walking with him, his hours of prayer and searching and reflecting and knowing that it was the only way that you and I and all of us would be bridged back to him, to God, to Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One. But in the process, his actions invited the high priest verdict of blasphemy and derision and of the council condemning him to death. Even when Pontius Pilate repeatedly called Jesus the King of the Jews, there's a bit of sarcasm there and a little bit of belittling. Yet Jesus carried the weight of the world on his shoulders. In his outstretched arms, hanging there for hours. Even the Roman soldiers add to this in their dressing Jesus as a king, giving him mock homage and putting a crown of thorns on his head. Most devastating are the moments of ridicule from three different groups. Which Jesus found and 
saw and heard. The centurion was one of those. The politician was another. And the Jewish leaders were yet a third. Regardless of how we hear and see the power and control that these individuals had on Jesus and his life, but more importantly on his death, we need to give thanks for through them God's plan of salvation and eternal life for us has been fulfilled. Even when his disciples, fearful, ran away, and only a single female remained to watch from a distance. With all that we know, none of it lessens the bitter agony of this moment. of Jesus riding into Jerusalem to shouts of Hosanna, only to die a few days later. Mark's Gospel here invites us into the suffering of Jesus, because as we enter into those words, we become painfully aware of what my sin and your sin has caused Jesus. His death, his agonizing death, his humiliation at the hands of everyone around him. Yet he did so in order that we might be forgiven, so that we might have the promise life everlasting. So as we enter into this week and reflect, as we gather on Friday to hear his seven last words from the cross, let us join together in giving thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this point, we would normally receive our um, offering. We remind people that you may send your offering to the church. You may bring it by during the office hours. Or you may send it to your church, your home church. Keep that in mind as we gather in your name. Amen. Let us pray. This morning our response will be, Your mercy is great. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy is great. In Jesus who came among us as a suffering servant, give your church humility. Redeem your people from pride and the certainty that we will always know your will. Heal us and empower us to confess Christ crucified. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In creation, life springs from death. Redeem your creation, awaiting resurrection. Restore lost habitats and endangered species. Create new possibilities for areas afflicted by climate change. Grant relief from natural disasters and nurture new growth. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Jesus has handed over to us the powers of this world. In all nations, instruct the powerful that they would not exploit their power, but maintain justice. Sustain soldiers and guide those who command them, that they serve those in, greatest, in the greatest need. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. On the cross, Jesus joined all who feel forsaken. Abide with those who are condemned to death. Defend those who are falsely accused. Console and strengthen those who are mocked and bullied.
accompany all who suffer. We pray, dear Lord, for Jan and Ed and Loretta, Arlene, Ingrid, Shirley and David, Doug and Sandra, Kathy, Reverend Marshall, David and Ben, Herbert and Susan, Edric, Eric and Dawson, Bob, Ed, Lois, Doug, James, Gilbert, Kelly and Kyle, Philip and Cecilia, Maria, Evelyn, Charles and Benji, Jennifer, James, Harold, Carol and TJ, Shirley and Glenn, Lindsay and Aston, Gracie and Ellen, Carol Ann, Reverend Philip, and for our active duty, Trey, Laura, and for our police and first responders, Lee, Adam, and Billy. And at Grace Luther, we pray, dear Lord, for Faye and Laurel, John and Judy, Roy, Debbie and Ron, Mary, Patsy, Reuben, David, Roger, Norman, Sheila, Sissy, Martha, John, Larry, Linda, Michelle, and Brian, and for all of our beloved brothers and sisters at Faith Luther. And for all those who are working tirelessly to care for the victims of COVID-19. Dear Lord, you follow, call followers to tend Jesus' body and death, sustain hospice workers and funeral directors, bless this congregation's ministries in times of death, those who plan and lead funerals, those who prepare meals, and all who suffer in support of grief. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We lift up in prayer the congregation of St. John Luther in Bishop. Be with them, guiding them during these trying times. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You inspired the centurion to confess Jesus as your son. We praise you for the faith you have given to people of all places and times. Give us such faith to trust the promises of baptism and with them to look for the resurrection of the dead. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all of our prayers to you, O faithful God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Jesus draws the whole world to himself. Come to this meal and be fed. At this point, I would ask that if you have one of the communion uh, kits, please take that. Remove the first uh, layer so that the wafer is available and to peel back the second so that when we get to the point of communion, you are ready. If you would like to have a communion kit for this week for um, and especially for next Sunday, please feel free to stop at the office Monday through Thursday from about 10 to 12 or 2 to 3, and you can get a communion cup. The Great Thanksgiving. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God. Through our Savior Jesus Christ, whose suffering and death gave salvation to all, you gather your people around the tree of the cross, transforming death into life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending.
broke it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped and given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink you all, that this cup is a new testament in my blood shed for you. This do as oft as you eat and drink it in remembrance of me. Let us join in the prayer he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. At this point, please take your wafer, the bread, the body of Christ given for you. At this point, please take your cup, the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood preserve and strengthen you unto eternal life, in his peace in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Communion Prayer. God of steadfast love, at this table you gave your people into one body for the sake of the world. Send us in the power of your Spirit that our lives may bear witness to the love that has been made known anew in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And now as you go, may our loving Lord go with you, may he go before you to show you the way beside you, be your friend behind to encourage, and may he go watching over you, filling you with his joy, his peace, and his love. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us join in singing Lamb of God in 336. 